All right, guys, what's up, Reefers? This is Alex Poro Corals, and I'm getting some footage here of my yellow tang eating chicken manure. That's right, see the little pieces right there? Can I see the little brown piece? Eating chicken manure right there for you guys out there that didn't believe me. The fact that yellow tangs, tangs eat chicken manure. There he is eating it down, pretty good yummy stuff. He says, not bad. He says, he, he's got his nori over there and everything. He's ignoring that for now. So, he apparently prefers chicken manure over nori. Yellow tangs, eating chicken manure is pretty weird, I know. But, that's what you get when you watch the good, the bad, and the ugly. And this is just a, a quick shot of, um, of, a uh, more manure reefing and I already did a video today but this is my second one I just thought I'd get a quick uh, a quick shot of this guy if he'll let me if you can barely see the the manure down there that he's eating so not sure how nutritious it, it is for him well I do know that well chickens they can eat anything you know corn to I think grass, just about anything. I guess, but the main thing that people feed them is corn. But so it should be, you know, uh, have enough fiber in there for them. Uh, so I don't know. I guess he finds it, uh, you know, probably is nutritious for him. So we'll see. Uh, anyway, that's just uh, just a quick shot of that. And um, let's see what. Um, else. Oh yeah, there's one thing I could talk about. I wanted to talk about these. Um, you know, a lot of the of the corals, they'll. Um, you can. You can spoil what we call spot feed them, right? I mean, you can spot feed your um, uh, mushrooms, but it takes a little bit more patience and, and virtually no flow and. You know, a lot of the large polyp corals, you can spot feed them, but a lot of the large polyp corals, um, you in fact can't spot feed them. So, you know, one, some of them are really obvious, like these bubbles right here, boom, they have these really um, strong tentacles that latch on to just about anything that they feel is meaty. You know, as long, as well as these guys like this micro musa right there, um, the elegance corals like that, the um, acanthophilias like that, except he has a real light touch, um, but he definitely takes them in. The same thing with the helofungia. He just tentacles a lot of times with the stuff I put in there. He really doesn't grab, latch onto things with his tentacles. But I mean, yeah, I mean, you could put pieces of food just like the acanthophilia, just straight right on the the mouth itself or kind of like you know towards the base and towards the area of the mouth itself and yeah it'll take it right in after a couple of minutes so you know um but a lot of these other corals i wanted to mention specifically the ganyopora this is one where a lot of people think that because it has such big um polyps on it you know, and such big uh, tentacles and big mouths on it that, wow, it actually latches onto things, grabs them, and pulls them in. And that's not the case. I haven't seen it actually touch and pull anything in from the, the polyp itself. And I don't think anyone else has either, really, that they've documented at least. So if, you, if you're out there and you have done so, please document it, you know, and let, let me and others know that you can do that. But as far as... um. I know that that's the way that, I mean, they do feed, it's just that they're taking things in straight from the water. You could say, you know, that they're filter feeding the water as they go, you know, such fine things like uh, the phytoplankton or just other dissolved um, organics, you know, that we're not specifically aware of which ones. Um, but the same thing is true as far as I know with the hammers. You know, the euphilia, the hammers, the frog spawn, and the torches. It's the same thing. I've never seen them actually take anything into their mouths like that or latch anything onto their tentacles. 
tentacles so they are just there like for protection and for um housing the the zooxanthellae you know just for the um, as far as um you know meat you know protection and if and, and uh, just surface area for that for the for the algae within their tissues so um yeah that's one thing just to keep in mind with them that's why you know as i've understand it that's the way they were that these type of large polyp corals they're similar to small polyp corals in that sense because the small polyp corals uh, are so small that it's you know assumed that they take in most of their nutrients um through dissolved organics or through you know, through the super super fine foods such as the um zooplankton or dissolved organics i'm not sure which again so yes yeah, it's, it's kind of interesting uh the the same thing like this parietes here, super, super small, like micro um, tentacles. They're almost so small that you can't even see them. You almost, even with the camera, super close up view like this. And yeah, you know, I could tell barely that some are open more than others. But you almost need, um, you almost need a magnifying glass to really see them well. And another interesting thing here is that, look what we got here. I got these feather duster worms here, but we also have what appears to be these uh, vermitid snails. And they live naturally in here with the uh, Christmas tree worm rocks and the parietes. And certainly don't seem to be doing any harm to the parietes or the Christmas tree worm rock. Uh so far as I can tell and they really look natural in here so I can really tell where where they can fit in with other corals and you know I know they're they can damage a lot of the other corals if they get too many of them in there and everything but you know it's uh they're probably just a natural um just natural part of the ecosystem as long as they're not destroying completely the corals I think I would I wouldn't worry about them too much you know you know, even if you, you know, unless something, unless you have a natural predator, but they're pretty tough anyway to try to remove them manually, and you could never really get all of them, but you can certainly, ha you can, might be able to get them down a little bit, you know, the population. Anyway, the, the acropora right here too, I mean, it has, these guys, they do have, um, the tentacles on them when they're extended and I could definitely see these guys feeding on the appropriate size food some micro uh, zooplankton you know similar to the stylophorus and uh, and uh, the stylophorus like the purple stylo and, and that so you know in the, in the wild I'm sure they're getting all kinds of stuff that's just the right size and the right uh, you know, just constantly, especially at night, you know, that we can't effectively reproduce in the aquarium as of yet. But in the aquarium, I, you know, it's I think it's understood that they're not getting that like they do in the wild and that they're just kind of uh, absorbing the dissolved organics or the, or the, or the type of uh, certain types of, um, you know, um, of, of zooplankton and the phytoplankton in the water. So definitely something to keep an eye on. As far as the feeding goes. Yep, okay guys. Well, I guess that's it for this update. Yeah, check me out on the next one. Happy reefing, guys. Bye.